we're back at the book corner on KBLP with Denise Harris. And when we left, um, we were talking about the the journey of Rand, um, Matrum, and Perrin, and the Aes Sedai, and their struggles to unite the um, other kingdoms, the other nations that refuse to lose their, you know, their independence, um, and by the zealots styling themselves the children of the light. They don't believe in the prophecies, and also by the Shanchan, the descendants of the lost colony of Arthur Hawkwings. And the Aes Sedai also become divided on how to deal with this dragon reborn. And as the story keeps going, the characters representing different fac- factions are introduced. Um, we're going to move on to Tarm and Gaidon, deriving its name from that of Armageddon. Um, Tarm and Gaidon is the apocalyptic battle where the dragon reborn opposes um, Shaitan, the dark, uh, while their followers fight elsewhere. Events and portents that foreshadow the last ba- battle take place in the books Knife of Dreams and The Gathering Storm. And the last battle takes place in Memory of Light. Um, the, the special powers that they have, uh, one called channeling, and some men and women have the natural ability to access this magic. Uh, it's called the One Power. Um, it is further divided into five different powers. Earth, water, air, fire, and spirit. In addition to granting access to the One Power, the ability to channel extends longevity and it masks the effects of aging. I could share. I, I'd like to have that, um, tell you the truth. That'd be nice to have. Um, channeling itself is uh, like a drug-like experience, very euphoric, um, involving the enhancement of all senses, making ordinary life seem dull. And a contrary power, um, the opposing power to the one power is the true power, and that's the dark side. Uh, Channelers can direct their power toward a desired purpose by creating one or more flows of the one power and constructing the weaves of the flows. An individual flow can consist of one of the five, but a weave can combine those um, and can be varying sizes with larger flows involving greater strength. Channelers, especially the novices, are very careful to control the amount of the one power, or they can burn themselves out, and they'll be void of any powers whatsoever. And once that goes away, there's left a a deep emptiness, um, uh, no purpose. And the channelers uh, severing their ability to access the one power forever. They can sense power in others um, and can feel when they have uh, a channeler has embraced um, one half or the other. Uh, for female channelers, this is limited only to other women, whereas male channelers are able to feel when a female channeler has embraced and it's felt by a tingling sensation. It is also possible for women to sense the strength of a channeler, uh, uh, the amount of the one power they have. The channeler can draw and successfully unaided without burning out. Men are limited to sensing, but cannot tell if the channeler has reached their maximum. Flows and weaves are visible to fellow channelers. Um, It allows channelers to learn how to construct specific idea, you know, their weaves and what they want to do with it. Uh, while male and female channelers have access to many of the same abilities, uh, the construction are often very different. In general, males have greater strength in the power than women, but female channelers can make a ring or um, uh, making circles. They can combine their strength. Circles consisting of only females are limited to 13 members, while the inclusion of male channelers allows the circle to grow up to 72. They must hold at least one more female than male, minimum of one man for every 12 women, because they are 
the stronger in the one power, and that will balance the uh, power out for them. There's also called um, artifacts um, in Harry Potter. They call them Horcruxes. In the Wheel of Time, they're called Angriol. Um, they are can be they can be constructed with the use of the one power, and they are divided into three types: Angriol, Sa Angriol, and Ter Angriol. Um, Ter Angriol are the used towards a specific effect or purpose. While Angreal and Sa Angreal simply magnify a user's ability. And I'm not going to get into the big differences with them. Um, it, it gets complicated. But if, you, if, you're, if you've read the series or are going to, um, you'll understand it as it goes. Um, now the Aes Sedai. Uh, in the Age of Legends... Both male and female channelers were collectively known as Aes Sedai and used the one power together with great effect. During the successful attempt to seal the Dark One's prison, the male half of the one power was corrupted by the Dark Force. Through continued exposure, male channelers go insane and ultimately die. The breaking of the world, a great time of upheaval and strife, um, was instigated by male channelers driven mad by the dark forces male channelers. Since that time, strength in the power has generally lessened, um, including the ability to create Angreal have been lost. Now, at the time when he wrote the first book, Fear of Another Breaking of the World and the Dangers uh, Posed, Corruption are so great that while increasingly where male channelers are now a source of nightmares and terror, um, the original symbol of the Aes Sedai, a circle separated into black and white halves, like yin and yang, um, by a line symbolizing both halves of the one power, has been replaced by the flame of Tarvalon, consisting only of the white half of the original symbol. This is how these people are just terrified that if there's a male channeler out there, they're going to destroy the world again. So when... Rand um, is prophesized as the Dragon Reborn. Uh, they do everything in their power to um, get rid of, uh, sever his power from him. Um, it's almost the equivalent of making him sterile, so to speak, because they take that away from him and it just leaves you like that. You're empty. You have no purpose. The Mar uh, Aes Sedai operates off a of point of guardians. They they think they're guardians of the one power. And they, you know, their word is law. They view themselves as the rightful owners of all Angreal and anything to do with the one power. They operate as advisors to kings and queens and are shown deference by most. Some nations have banned channeling and view them as suspect of not outright evil. But they really have influence on um, the nation's rulers, on these nation's rulers. They give their advice, but they kind of um, prod them into what they want them to do. Um, Aes Sedai search the world for females with the ability to channel, or the ability to be taught to channel and bring any they find to what they call the tower. Um, untrained channelers can be a danger to themselves and others, and can result in accidental death of themselves and others. Channelers of a certain age that have survived without training are often referred to as wildlers. Uh, and they, the Aes Sedai don't believe in wildlers. They, you know, you can't, you can't control it. You can't do it. We have to train you. They are the self-appointed uh, um, ones to do that. So... In many instances, these wilders have no idea they are channeling. But with training and time, they can, you know, these obstacles can be overcome, and the wilders can chant, but the wilders can channel at will. Um, foreign lands outside the Aes Sedai's uh, province 
handle channeling quite differently, intended to stress their authority. In the Aes Sedai, consider them wilders as well. And um, anything that goes against what they believe, you know, that they're wilders. Let's put it that way. They're not um, trusted. You know, they think um, without their advice, they, they're going to run into trouble and they can't um, go on without their, you know, advice. The Aes Sedai, however, can trace their history well back within the Age of Legends. There is one group called the Aja, the Red. It's devoted to hunting down any and all male channelers and stripping uh, them of their abilities. It's called gentling. Okay. And removing a female's ability is known as stilling. Um, and that is the greatest form of the punishment. Um, the Aes Sedai avoid even looking at the stilled um, as a mere idea of being separated from one power. Um, the source of their elite status, as well as the experience of channeling, is so distasteful. Uh, they enter deep depression. Um, they they're empty, no purpose, and eventually a lot of them will die. They waste away. Okay, we're going to go to some more fantasy music. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> 